Hello students, in the continuation of the class of larynx, today we will discuss about the laryngeal joints. Now what is the meaning of laryngeal joints? That there are joints which are present between the laryngeal cartilage. So let's see what are the joints present between the laryngeal cartilages. So there are three joints which you will find between the laryngeal cartilages. These joints are, the first joint is known as cricothyroid joint. Now as the name suggests, it is joint between the cricoid and thyroid cartilage. The second joint is known as cricoarytenoid joint. That is a joint between the cricoid with arytenoid. And the third joint is known as arytenocorniculate joint. Arytenocorniculate joint. Now in this diagram, you can see that this is your cricoid cartilage. Now on the lateral side of the cartilage, you are having the facet for the articulation of thyroid cartilage. It is going to form your cricothyroid joint. Then on the superolateral part of this lamina, you have the facet for the cricoarytenoid joint. And there is a joint at the tip of the uh, your arytenoid with corniculate cartilage is known as arytenocorniculate joint. So let's discuss these joint one by one. These all are the short note for your university exam. So first is the cricothyroid joint. Now the important thing is that cricothyroid joint is a synovial variety of the joint. So this is the first question which you will have in the exam. Now the second thing which you know as the name itself suggests it is a joint between the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage and the facet present on the lateral side of the arch of cricoid cartilage. So you can see in this diagram that this is the area which is representing the joint which is the inferior horn is here and you have the facet on the lateral side of the arch of cricoid cartilage. Now this joint is having the capsular ligament just like the any other synovial joint and the capsular ligament is strengthened posteriorly by a fibrous band. Now what are the movements take place at the cricothyroid joint? Now when you will see this cricothyroid joint, the primary movement take place is the rotation. Now for the rotation you have the transverse axis. So this is the first and most con important concept which you should understand that if we will pass in a wire or a rod from this side of the joint, it will pass through the joint of opposite side because it is a paired joint which is present on both the right and left side. So this is the axis and it is a transverse axis and through this axis the joint is allow the movement. So this is a transverse axis and what is the name of movement is the rotation that means this cartilage is rotating around this transverse axis. So around this transverse axis one cartilage can move backward and forward on the another cartilage. So suppose this is the transverse axis now around this transverse axis your thyroid cartilage will go down will go up or vice versa the car cricoid cartilage may go up and down. The effect of this rotation is to bring together or approximate the lamina of your thyroid cartilage and the arch of cricoid cartilage. Now this is very important concept and question for your exam that what will happen at this cricothyroid joint. You can see that there is a gap. Now this gap is present in the anterior aspect which we discussed in the class of the uh, skeleton framework of the larynx that this gap is generally filled by the uh, membrane which is present here and that membrane is known as cricothyroid membrane. Now this gap which is present here is decreased. Now when you will have the movement on this joint what will happen the thyroid will move downwards now when the thyroid will move downward ultimately the gap is going to decrease or suppose i will move this cricoid cartilage upward then again this gap is going to decrease 
so what is happening what you are able to appreciate at the external part of the larynx by the movement at cricothyroid you can appreciate only one thing that is the gap between the lower border of the thyroid lamina and the upper border of cricoid arch is decreasing by the forward movement of thyroid cartilage so it is a relative movement to one another so either the thyroid is moving or the cricoid is moving that's why it is known as relative movement and this movement is explained by the two views there are two views to understand this movement first is the classical view now what the classical view says the classical view says that anterior arch of cricoid rotates now in the first view which bone is rotating the bone rotating is cricoid and the cricoid is going in upward direction towards the thyroid cartilage what does it means that the movement occurs in the upward direction by the your cricoid cartilage now you know that cricoid cartilage is having two part anterior part is known as arch posterior part is known as lamina now what will happen around this transverse axis as the cricoid anterior part is going up what will happen here the lamina automatically will go down so the same time lamina of the cricoid cartilage goes downwards and backward so you have to understand this very clearly that this is your cricoid cartilage here is the axis and when this anterior point is going up simultaneously the posterior part is going downward and backward so you have to understand this movement of the cricoid cartilage now this downward and backward swing of the cricoid lamina associated with the backward displacement of arytenoid cartilage now this is the important question and concept to understand again why because you know that on the posterior side you have the arytenoid on the uh, uh, superior border of your lamina now what will happen now anteriorly you are having the process and that process is known as vocal process of arytenoid from here you have the vocal cords now this vocal cord is a attachment between the inner side of the laryngeal prominence inner side of the laryngeal prominence to this vocal process so what will happen when the contraction of the muscle will occur this muscle is actually taking the posterior part downward now with the posterior displacement this arytenoid is also going backward and ultimately the length of the vocal cord will increase because this point will shift somewhere here now because of this shifting what will happen the length will increase and tension in the vocal cord increase so this is the important thing that the distance between the thyroid angle that means here and the vocal process that means this point increases and there is a stretching of vocal fold so dear students whenever you are talking about the movement of cricothyroid joint the what is the ultimate effect and ultimate effect is the length the length of vocal cord increases and the tension in vocal cord increases now why because ultimately the distance between the vocal process and the thyroid attachment is going to increase now there are two ways to increase one way which we are discussing here that anterior point is fixed but the posterior point is going apart and how it is going apart that the cricoid anteriorly coming forward and backward it is going downward and this downward movement is associated with with backward displacement of arytenoid so this is the classical view now the next view is known as negus view now in this negus view the cricoid is now become fixed now in the previous view the cricoid is moving now the cricoid is become fixed now when the cricoid is fixed in this view the thyroid cartilage is going to comes forward now when the thyroid going forward and downward ultimately this space is going to decrease now when this again suppose this is your cartilage 
Now on this cartilage you will have the arytenoid and from the arytenoid from anterior to this inner side you have the attachment of vocal cord. Now what will happen? The ultimate thing is that when there is a downward movement this thyroid cartilage will move like this. So what will happen? The point will come here and this distance will again increase. So the distance between the thyroid angle and vocal process again increased. So you have to understand that there are two ways. One way is by movement of, one way is by the movement of cricoid cartilage. Another way is by movement of thyroid cartilage. Ultimately, what will happen with both the things? Ultimately, this gap between the thyroid and cricoid is going to decrease. And when the thyroid is going downward, there is a stretching at the anterior end. When cricoid is going upward, there is a stretching occurs because of the displacement of posterior end. So this is the basic difference between the movements of cricothyroid joint uh, in the uh, placement in the displacement of thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. So if the thyroid is moving, it is known as negus view and if the cricoid is movi moving, it is known as classical view. The next joint is cricoarytenoid joint. Now cricoarytenoid joint is also synovial variety of joint and each joint is enclosed by a capsular ligament. The joint is between the facet and this facet present on the lateral part of the upper border of lamina of cricoid cartilage. So this point is become important because whenever you are doing the movement at cricothyroid joint, the joint movement occurs because of lateral placement of the facet. So if you will see this facet, this facet is laterally placed. It is not exactly on the superior side. It is a bit laterally placed. Now it articulates with the base of arytenoid. The cricoid facets are elliptical, convex and oblique. They are not oval, they are elliptical, so they are elongated, they are not circular, they are convex. So the reciprocal surface is concave on the arytenoid. The, the direction of this uh, surface is laterally, anteriorly and downward. So the direction is something like this. It is downward laterally. So again I am saying this that the placement of the facet is important. They are placed on the lateral aspect of the your lamina and that's why they this surface or the facets are known as sloping shoulders of cricoid lamina. So dear students the important thing about the cricoarytenoid joint movement is the placement of the facet and these facet are known as sloping shoulders because they are directed forward and laterally so whenever the movement will occur the bone is going away along with the sloping shoulders as the facets directed laterally anteriorly and downwards the long axis of two facets intersect posteriorly so here you can see that if we will draw the long axis, the long axis will go posteriorly and meet here at around angle of 50 degree. Now what type of the movement take place at this cricoarytenoid joint? There are two basic movements. One is the rotatory movement, another is the gliding movements. Those will take place at cricoarytenoid joint. The movements of gliding and rotation are not independent. They are always associated with each other. This is again the question for your exam and you have to understand the mechanism of cricoarytenoid joint and you keep this thing in mind that isolated rotation and gliding is not possible at cricoarytenoid joint. The rotation of arytenoid cartilage is at right angle to the long axis of cricoid cartilage, cricoid facet. What does it mean? That this is the direction of the facet which I told you they are laterally placed and on this facet you have the placement of arytenoid cartilage. So the movement of the rotation is occurring around the long axis but 
it is at least at, uh, at the right angle that means this is the axis and this is the arytenoid so the axis is having a 90 degree relation with the long axis of facet because of the obliquity, obliquity of the facet it causes each vocal process to swing laterally or medially thereby increases or decreases the width of rima glottidis now what is rima glottidis now when you will see the vocal process from the vocal process there is a vocal cord attached to the inner side of thyroid lamina now the gap between these two vocal cord is known as rima glottidis so the gap between the rima glottidis decreases or increases by the movement of arytenoid cartilage now the important thing which you have to understand that because of the oblique placement that is known as sloping shoulders of the cricoid cartilage what will happen that the rotation is always occur along with the gliding movement so if the cartilage is rotating laterally it is not pure lateral rotation it is rotation with gliding if the medial rotation is take place it is not only the medial rotation but it is medial rotation with medial gliding so rotation is occurring only in this way and gliding is in this way but there is a mixing the lateral rotation and the lateral rotation is with gliding in the same way the medial rotation with medial gliding so the gliding movement with the rotation is important and that is helpful to decrease the gap of rima glottidis or increase the gap of rima glottidis so this movement are sometimes known as rocking movement of arytenoid cartilage there is a gliding movement which i already told you about that so the direction and slope of their articular surface imposing a forward and downward movement on lateral gliding so when the lateral gliding will take place the uh, arytenoid cartilage are moving forward and downward and when the uh, lateral medial gliding will, uh, will take place it will go back why it is going forward and downward it is going forward and downward because they are sloping shoulders directed forward and laterally so it is going forward and downward and when the uh, reverse movement will occur it will come back so medial gliding is associated with the medial rotation while the lateral gliding is associated with lateral rotation and because of these two things there is a possible adduction and abduction of focal cord so here in this diagram you can see that this is your two vocal process of arytenoid cartilage and here you are able to see that these are the two vocal cords so this is the one vocal cord this is the another vocal cord and what will happen that this space is known as rima glottidis is going to decrease when the both side of vocal cords approximate each other yani then that means adduction but when the abduction will take place that time both side of the arytenoid is going away and this is possible just because of the crico arytenoid joint which is allowing two sets of the uh, varieties of the movement that is rotation associated with gliding so the resulting in adduction and abduction of vocal folds the last joint is known as arytenocorniculate joint now this joint can be synovial or cartilaginous in nature clear then what about the nerve supply these all the three joint supplied by recurrent laryngeal now this is the question it is not at all supplied by superior laryngeal now all the joints supplied by recurrent laryngeal now and recurrent laryngeal now lies just immediately behind the crico thyroid joint so at the end of this class of the laryngeal joints you are able to understand that how many type of joints are there what type of the movements take place and what is the ultimate effect occurs on the vocal cord if you are talking about the effect of the on the vocal cord by the movement of crico thyroid joint then you have to keep only one thing that the movement of crico thyroid changes the length of the vocal cord and tension in the vocal cord while the movement of the crico arytenoid joint is 
responsible for the opening of rima glottidis by the adduction and abduction movements of vocal cord so this is all for today's class thank you